Buffalo sank the wife. Um, all those that are saved, stand up. Amen. God will be my own little place of 
dominion. I don't know a place where my talents can really be effective in, in whatever the circumference of that is. Amen? And I need to be thankful for that. And, uh, you know, I don't have, uh, you know, whatever the Lord has given to me, that's what I need to give back to Him. And not to be in, try and be anything more than what I am. Amen? And uh, I'm, I'm out of New York, a farmer, growing up on uh, farms and such, uh, not really knowing how to study, and, and I was never a scholarly kind of person. But, uh, you know, God's given me talents with uh, mechanical uh, mind and such, and them things come easy to me, and, and I enjoy those things, and God's allowed me to use those talents that I don't even know how I don't know how to do some of the things I do. He just, I don't know, He's made it easy for me, amen? He gave me a talent. And he says to use it to his glory. Amen? So, my talent I can use. You might not be able to use uh, my talent because it's not fit for you. Amen? And it's just like that armament in Ephesians 6. He's formed it for you. Amen? Put on your own armor. Put on Saul's armor. Amen? Be cumbersome. It's going to be a hindrance. The armor itself is going to hurt you. Amen? So, uh, we're going to look at Psalm Solomon, uh, Song of Solomon here, chapter 6, and uh, verse 10 there. It says, Who is she that looketh forth as the morning? Fair as the moon. For the opportunity this morning to open up your word. Father God, I pray that you hide this flesh behind the cross of Calvary. All flesh, Lord. Uh, chasing us in anything that might hinder us this morning from being in one accord. Uh, Father God, that we might uh, give all things over to you. That we might be uh, one body, one unit here. We all stood up. We all claim the name of Christ. He said, Amen. It would name the name of Christ. We depart from iniquity. And Father God, if there be anything in the midst of us, I just pray that you would uh, help us to just give that over to you and uh, that we may be set free from it. And your spirit might have his way in the midst of us. And Father God, I do thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, well, Song of Solomon, amen. Uh, you, you look at this here. Who is she that looketh forth as the morning? Uh, in the morning time, we get up, you know, the night is dark. It's dark. Uh, it, it, it's a time that we, uh, we're, we're not going to accomplish much when we're sleeping. It's a time when this body is tired. It needs rest and such. But in the morning, it's a sweet time in the morning. It's a time when we can get up and have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a time when we can get into His Word. It's a time when we can just muse on what God has done in our life. And we can, we can uh, put this flesh down. And uh, just get aside with the Lord Jesus Christ every morning. If you don't do that every morning, you're missing out. You're missing out. Because it's a time when things are quiet. It's a time when it's a, it's a new day. It, his, son is, his word is new every, every morning. It's fresh. It's, it's pure. And, it, and it's uh, God will do something in your heart if you set that time apart from Him. Amen? And uh, so looking forward as the morning. I look forward to the day. Well, how will God use me in this day? What's going to transpire in this day? I don't know what's going to take place in this day. I got some, I can, I have surmised what might take place. I have some plans, but you know, the Lord may change those plans any moment, any moment for any one of us. Amen. So we look forward. We have some hopes in this day. Amen. And, and uh, uh, she looks forth as the morning, fair as the moon. And a lot of times the moon is a setting or for a romantic setting, amen? And, uh, you know, you look at that, it's, it's got a soft light, amen? It's a soft light. It, it lights up the night that you might see where you might be able to go. And uh, it, it, it's uh, always used, usually in a romantic setting. And it goes, it says, it says the sky is beautiful. And God has placed that up there. And it, it's, it's for us, amen? To enjoy. And it's got that soft gradient to it. The light. You can look directly into it. And it's not going to hurt your eyes. Amen. It's not overpowering. And we can, you know, you think about something big when you look up there at the sky, you see all of those stars, and you see that moon sitting up there, especially if it's a full moon. It just does something to the sky, doesn't it? And uh, and, that, and that's uh it's it's fair to look upon. And you can you can uh, just cast your eyes upon there. And I think that God uses those as tools to magnify Himself. Amen. He says that He, that he's, he shows Himself in creation. Amen. Yeah. That no man would be without excuse. We're, we're man's without excuse. And that's the first place that man ever deals with God is in nature. Amen. If we reject God, we have no use for Jesus Christ. 
He's not going to do a thing in our life if we reject God the Creator. How could we ever come to a Savior if we don't believe in a God? Because he's, it's His judgment, amen? And praise God for His judgment because He says He's known by His judgments, amen? So, looking at that moon is fair and, it, and it's just uh, it's pleasant. And it says, clear as the sun. Now, you can't go out in the full sun and look into the sun. That's such a clear, bright, it's going to do something to your eyeballs, amen? amen. It's going to put some bright, white spots in your eyes. You're not going to be able to see anything. You continue to look directly into that sun. You're not going to be able to see anything after a while. Amen? Uh, Saul looked into a bright light above the sun. And he got up. He had scales on his eyes. I, praise, I believe God did that to protect his eyes. Amen? Although he had some problems with eyes the rest of his life, but he was still able to see. Amen? If he had continued to look in that, the light of God, he wouldn't have been able to see anything. He would have wiped out his eyes completely. But you do the same thing. You look into that sun. Bright as the sun. Amen? And it says, and, and it's clear. It has no blemishes in it. There's no blemishes. Now you look at the moon and you'll see some flaws and different things there. It, the, the, the light is not as so bright that it would uh, hide all the, the imperfections and the depths and all that of, of the moon, the surface of the moon. But that sun is pure light. It's just a ball of fire. It's light. It's pure. Amen? And it says, as and terrible as an army with, with banners. Something about an army with banners. Amen? That's why when we go down there on Beale Street and the heathen seas, the, the banners, I, I can remember some years when you get looking at the, the eyes of those that come out, they'll come right out of, the, out of their, uh, you know, the, the, the taverns down there and it's like, wow, oh, what's this all about? What's this about? What's this about? And I can remember one year in particular, I can't remember the date or anything, but we had a, uh, I mean, we had a huge crowd. I was like 300 people out there or something, and we must have had, I don't know, 50 banners or something. I mean, it was a massive crowd. We had a big old drum, you know, the big ones, and boom, boom. And I mean, they were all singing, and you got 300 people singing out there. And I mean, it was just, you know, they're like, hey, God showed up. God's in the street. Amen. I mean, it was an army. It, was, it brought terror. But we don't always have those big crowds, amen? I mean, there's times when God whittles it down. But for the heathen, that was what they needed that night. I mean, they knew it was something to do with God, amen? amen. Might not have understood it all, but they knew that God had showed up, amen? So this is an interesting verse here, and I, and I believe it's a picture of the church. It's a picture of the church. And uh, it, it, it's, you know... It's just, she looketh forth as the morning, she spares the moon, and clears the sun, terrible as an army with banners. Amen? And uh, so, let's go over to Romans chapter 1. We as uh, a born-again Christian, as we uh, showed forth this morning, name in the name of Christ, ought to be concerned about our integrity. Amen? Because the integrity of a man shows... Uh, his integrity should be honest, sincere. I mean, if we're going to serve the Lord, it ought to be upright. Amen? Uh, righteous. And, uh, you know, a man will see that. And there's honor unto a man that has integrity in, in, the, in you know, the scope of, of this world. And uh, But here in Romans chapter 1, verse 28, It says, and, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, deceit, debate, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant, uh, covenant breakers, without natural effect, affection, and implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do such, uh, do not, not only do the same, uh, but have pleasure in them to do, to do them. He says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which do such things. <coughs> and thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same? 
that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey, or, or, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation, anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the, of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. For as many have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Amen? Now, God is, is looking for a man of obedience. He wants a man of obedience. And if you love, he says, if you love me, you obey my commandments. And that commandment is not just the commandments of the Ten Commandments or the commandments of Jesus Christ. It, uh, it, it encompasses all of that. And when the law is fulfilled, then we uh, don't do away with the law. We walk within the law. And, and the law is a comfort to us because it's a towering wall on either side. Amen? And, and so we don't uh, rise above the law. Uh, we don't fulfill the law. But Christ fulfilled the law. Amen? And we're just benefactors of that. Amen. And that's why we ought to rejoice. And we ought to walk within the law. And we ought to have some integrity that's going to bring glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when we, within the walls of those of the law itself, and it's fulfilled, and we're walking with a thankful heart, and we're glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ, we're giving Him honor and glory in our life, that's what God is pleased, that's what His face will shine upon us, and that's what we're going to be as like the moon, and we're going to be able to shine forth the glory of God, these people out here on the street. Right. Now, if Jesus, if God Almighty showed up on the street down there, it'd be like looking into the sun. It'd be way too bright. Amen. Amen. In your darkness of your days of evil and wicked before you received Christ, if God would have shown up unto you, you would have died, perished, forever lost. Amen. It was a blessing unto man when, when God pushed Adam out of the garden. If he would have partaken of the tree of life in the condition he was in, he would have been eternally damned. But God loved them in a greater way than that. He clothed them, he provided for them, and he took them out of the garden. He took them and put them into a place of safety, really. It was a place where they might learn to love the Lord Jesus Christ. Didn't Jesus Christ himself learn obedience? Huh? Amen? I mean, we don't, I don't understand that, but nevertheless, the scriptures say so. Amen? And so, when we're uh, in a place in our life where God calls upon us to shine, why do we whine? Amen? Why do we whine? Well, I remember this, and this is way back from Brother Ryan, Riley up in New York. Don't whine, shine! Amen? That's what he said. Amen? I don't forget that. Why should I whine? I ought to be, ought to be glorifying Him and just magnifying the Lord and being that light as like the moon. The heathen likes to look upon the moon. Amen. As I say, it's, it's like a romantic setting. I'm not really at all like great a romantic person, but you know, uh, out on the beach with all the water and that, that moon or something about all that, that moon glitters on the water and all that. And it lights up the heavenlies. Amen. And it, and it puts just enough light out there where your mind's got to go to God. It's got to go that there's, there's some great being out there. Amen. And that's what we do. That's what God wants to do through you out there on our streets. Right. Or wherever you are. He's giving you a talent. Use the talent. Amen? Amen? Use that talent for the Lord Jesus Christ. Not everyone can stand in a pulpit and preach. Not everyone can stand in a street corner and preach. Not everyone is going to be able to go to the nursing home and deal with them. Not everyone's going to be able to go to the mentally retarded. Not everyone's going to be able to stand before uh, you know, the, the dignitaries of the land. But don't underestimate God. Amen. Don't underestimate God. Amen. He's going to take you out of your comfort zone. I mean, if I was in my comfort zone, I'd go to hell. Yep. Amen. Yep. I'm uncomfortable. I hate. 
I hate cities. I hate crowds. I don't like dressing people. But God has called me to do that. So I just be happy. <laughs> Amen. I mean, I mean, I I don't have anything that's great. I mean, I know that. Amen. That helps me to rely upon Him. Amen. Amen. I don't have any light of myself. I know that. Amen. That was my life. <coughs> helps me to have compassion on yeah. But God wants you to be as like that sun or that uh, moon for them. And we need to not go out there on the street and think, hey, you know, i got to bring this big dissertation to them, this theological uh, address to these people. <coughs> or be like, oh, I don't know. You know, I mean, I'm not here to have a good time. I mean, no, I can't handle that. That's just too much. And it closed you off. Amen. Amen? One fit word spoken to a whole lot more Amen. than right. some big long dissertation. Amen. 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 Hey man, just sitting down next to someone that's hurt, yeah. and just put your arm around and say, you know, God loves you. Amen. And if that's all you did, I'll tell you what, that's some great comfort. Right. I wasn't raised with a mom and a dad. I was raised in foster homes, and, and, uh, and back in the days when I was in foster homes, they weren't guarded as much today, although they're not guarded either. It's probably more wicked today than even when I was in it. Because back then, they put you to work. Praise the Lord. They learned some, it, it built some, some character in you. Amen? <clears throat> today, Abusing them and all kinds of stuff. They won't let them work and all this stuff. They're turning them into little brats and yeah. bastards, really. Yeah. And uh, but see, back in that day, they made you work and all that. And but you know, uh, one day I had this little hamster. Hamster, you know, I had this little hamster, a rat, this little mouse. <laughs> amen. A blind man likes these little creatures, but amen. You know, God made them. Anyway, I had this thing. And this uh, one of uh, their, uh, I think it was Carolyn's sister's son, came over and visiting. Well, he was he was strange. He had a pinch in the tail and half in that of that little hamster, which I found out later. And the hamster bit him, wouldn't you? Right. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and and then he ended up killing that little hamster man. Or it wasn't a hamster, it was a guinea pig. Excuse me. And uh, boy, I tell you what, that just that was just too much for me. I just broke down and I wept over that little thing. And I was just beside myself. And I wasn't full of anger yet. You know, I hadn't overcome the loss of my, my precious, you know, little animal there. And uh, and then Carolyn came in, put her arm around me, and I'll tell you what, that was the first time I ever felt like the love of a mother. As like a mother, I, I would think that you that were raised up with a mother, uh, there's some bonding there, amen? There's something about a mom. And you know, uh, that, that was really, I just felt like there was love that, that just came upon me, amen, and it comforted me. And I'll never forget that. And you know, that's what God wants to be through you to somebody out there. Because they're out of love. They don't have any love. I mean, it's, you know, you're in the world. I mean, some of you young ones are raised in a Christian home. I mean, you've never fought. You've never come to a place where you've had anger toward your brother or your sister or your mother or your father. I mean, you, no. Yeah, you've had that. You know what it's like. But see, it's magnified out there. It's magnified out there. I mean, I remember in public school, boy, were we just, we were just mean and wicked, un, just unruly towards one another. Right. Amen? And that's how they live. I mean, the guy that's trying to do right in school, be studious, and, you know, do everything right, he was the nerd. He got picked on. He's the one that nobody liked. And he was like the, we scoffed him. Amen? And when they start wanting, you know, there's some out there that believe. Amen? Who's the gospel to be preached unto? I mean, who's going to receive Jesus Christ? Those that believe. Amen? There's some out there that believe there's a God. There's some out there that have faith in Jesus Christ. They really believe He's real. They really believe He was God manifest in the flesh. They really believe that, that He died for their sin. But they've never been given a gospel, a, the, the pure gospel of Jesus Christ. They've looked at religion and they get confused about Jesus Christ. Even though they believe in Jesus Christ. Look how many are in religions. And, well, I mean, the Mormons have tweaked their religion so much. I mean, you, you didn't know anything about their religion. You walk away thinking, man, I don't know. It seems like they, they might have something there. But you look at their religion, they don't have the real Jesus. They don't have the real book. They, they despise this book. They don't stand on this book. They stomp on this book. 
And they buried this book. This book's just a tool for them to sucker in men and women. That's all. And, and you know what one of their greatest converts are? Baptists. Yeah. You know what I'm Baptists. <laughs> Talk to them all the time. Oh, well, I was once a Baptist. Now I'm a Mormon. Oh, boy. So that was a Baptist sitting in a Baptist church on a Baptist view, lost on their way to hell. And a cult comes along and puts their arm around them. Said, we love you. Amen? That's, and they said, oh, somebody loves me. And they went off. Because they didn't have the gospel of Jesus Christ. It didn't prick into their hearts. A lot of churches not preaching the gospel. And uh, there's a lot of churches not giving the full counsel of God's word. Amen. And they're not giving the light that needs to be shined out into the hearts of men. That they might be able to see. Well, we need to be that light. Are you that light? Are you fearing the Lord? Do uh, you have fear of the Lord? Uh, you know, can you remember that time when the gospel of Jesus Christ was made clear to you? And, uh, and it was in such a way that compelled you to fall at the foot of the cross of Christ? And it was, it was brought in such a way where you wanted to be clean from the filth and the stench of death. And you wanted to come to that place where you had that fragrance of life. I mean, you just... It was such a, a, a breath of fresh air and enlightened you and lifted you up. Amen? That's what they're, they're seeking for something out there. And that's what they need. They need an arm put around them. They need someone to get down there. And not condescend uh, them, but to get down there and, and uh, say, God love them. Amen? And I'm not wiping out. I mean, we need to let them know, uh, warn them of God's judgment. He said, go do that. And the foolishness of preaching he chose to save the souls of men. Amen? And those that shall perish, that preaching is going to be foolishness unto them. And they're going to say, you're, you're, just, you're, just, uh, you're just out of your mind. Amen? Felix said that to, uh, to Paul. He said, you're out of your mind. And Agrippa, one of them, said, Paul, you're mad. All this learning has made you mad. And you're just out of your mind. And who was it? I think it was one of them guys. I forget which one it was. But he said, Thou almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Amen. Almost. Yeah. He's close. Yeah. But nevertheless, he rejected it. But are you, are you shining forth? Are you allowing God to work through you? Uh, you know, I mean, we look at, uh, does, does man love Jesus? No, man doesn't love Jesus. Uh, man doesn't seek after God. He says, no man seeketh after God. God sought. And God found me. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And, and you know, he put those little things like Carolyn's uh, just affection that, that just transposed love from one person to another. Amen? Uh, like Jonathan and David, their love surpassed the love of women. Amen? That can, that can pass from one to another. How much greater the love of God. When he takes you as a vessel. And in whatever talents, whatever place he's placed in your life, and you say, God, I'll be a willing vessel. And you open up and you allow him to, to, to throw to, to flow through you and to bless someone with his love. Amen. And they feel that and, and they and they uh, respond to that. Amen. Uh, let's see here. God says it pleased, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Amen? And uh, so when we go out there to the lost, we need to go with a straightforward, simple message that they can understand. Amen? I mean, it's uh, we can take the letter of the word and we can, we can make it very complex and uh, confusing and seem like there's many steps as religion does. But we shouldn't succumb to the, the ways of religion. We need to just make it simple as Christ made it simple. Amen. I mean, when Jesus Christ was ready to go uh, to, be, to, to walk towards that cross, what did Peter say? No, no! <laughs> and he said, get behind me, Satan. Amen. Amen. And how about you and me? When God says, hey, I want to use you here. You say, no, Lord, I think I'm going to be better off over here. I mean, my, my talents would be better off over here. Uh, you know, when he gave those talents out, 
Uh, they didn't all have the same amount of talents. And the, the, the guy that, that started digging down into the ground, I mean, he only had one talent. Just one talent. But he started digging in the ground. He's going to bury that talent. You know, when Y2K came around, the Christians, it was the Christians that started, uh, you know, fortifying themselves to survive. It was the Christians. And the heathen could see that. Yeah. That it was the Christian that was seeking after food and raiment and guns and, and uh, protection from, uh, you know, radiation and all these things. Why not? What, what good is it going to do you to survive uh, some, uh, you know, catastrophe? If God wants you to survive, you'll survive. Amen. I mean, look back into the dark ages. How many survived? Amen. And the, the church actually got stronger. And even those that were being destroyed by animals and ripped apart, there was those on the sidelines saying, hey, I'm with you. Amen. Knowing that they would be in the same place. This world doesn't want to need to see us fortifying ourselves, digging out in the hills, trying to get away. God said, go into the world. He said, be in the world, but not of the world. And the world needs to see us and to experience the light of God. Amen. Amen. You need to be, you may need to let God meet her out of life. It needs to be in each individual, because I don't know what they need to hear. Right. And be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. And when he tugs on your heart, go sit down with the one that's, you know, you're looking at and it's like, ah, what is it? I mean, there's some pretty scary things out there. And there might be some places where God's going to call you to walk. That's some scary places. Amen? When Peter got out of the boat, I mean, I, I think about that. I think, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I can step out of that boat. I mean, I would be too logical. Step out of water, I'm going down. Amen? But Peter had faith that if, hey, if it was the Lord, hey, bid me come unto you. Amen? Do we cry out?
When those, uh, those spies went into the land, they set the same stage, and Moses rebuked them. Forget exactly what he's, how he said it, but, you know, uh, he, he says, you're, you're hinder their heart. I, I don't remember exactly what the words were, but he, they, he went to, they were going to hinder their heart. He said, how do you sit here? Why would you sit here? While your, your uh, brothers go, your brother go over, the nation of Israel goes over to the promised land. Amen? Yeah. Now, he didn't refute that the land was good or, or you know, anything of that nature. But he, 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 they had set the stage to bring Israel back right down. And God's anger would have been furious against Israel in the place. He said, you augment the, 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 uh, the wrath of God. Augment. Make it bigger. Amen? You take a little scream and, and you get it in the flood stage. Amen? And that's what they were going to do to the, anger, the, the wrath of God against Israel. And he was going to send them right back out there in the wilderness. Another generation would have been lost. God would have done it. But Reuben and Gad, they, they heeded to the rebuke of Moses. And they went in before them, armed, and didn't return until they had victory there. Amen. But we have a battle to fight. And we're armed. And if you're not armed, it's your own fault. Right. You didn't put on the armor. God gave it to you. Amen. Amen. He issued you a set of armor that is sufficient. Regardless of whatever your main, you know, if you're main or what. Paul saw it. He said, "My God said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. So stand up as a soldier and go for it and let God be your off the light. And he'll do it if you go out there in the spirit of God. Amen. I just try to encourage you to go forth. Amen. Just go forth and, and glorify the Lord and uh, be, be clear as the sun. Amen. No occasion to find fault in you. We don't want them uh, putting fingers on, hey, you're out here looking at the women, or are you moving to the music, or whatever. That's, that's wicked of us for some heathens, because they're looking. They're looking, having a hard life, flesh and subjection, and be armored, and have a banner, amen. This is our standard right here. That's our standard, and it needs to be raised up high, amen. And we got our banners here, you know, that will set a standard for them. Amen. We can preach off of banners. But we ought to be as terrible as an army. Fortified. Amen. With a standard. You know, in those wars when the standard would fall, the heart of, heart of the army would fall. Amen. Be like Moses when he, his, his hands went down. They, lose, they were losing ground. Amen. And so let's be out there and fortify one another. Lift one another's hands up and, and be as one. Amen. As one. So amen. I'm just encouraging the Lord today to, to just go forth and be what the Lord has fit you to be. Amen. Let's